This video module provides a step-by-step -step process for using community analysis techniques to find patterns in ecological and ethnobiological data. The process of analyzing and interpreting data will be done with a simple example. We're going to look at the distribution of tree species on a set of sites. Note that this is a simple demonstration of the general use of this kind of analysis. The analysis technique is not limited to this kind of application. Community analysis is a technique that is quite general, and it can be used in many contexts. Research studies are based on experimental designs. Using community analysis technology is no different. In this example, our research design consists of an elevation transect with five sites. Our data consist of the occurrence of different tree species on these five sites. Our hypothesis is that there is no pattern in the similarities between sites. The data that are collected at each of the sites are put into what is called a two-way table. If you look at this table, you'll see the sites are arranged across the top. You can see the labels for site 1 to site 5. Each of the rows in the table holds the observations for different tree species. You can see the label for each species on the left side of the table. In this example, single letters are used as an abbreviation for each species. Inside the table are the observations on each site for each species. A value of 0 means a tree species was not found on a site, and a 1 means that it occurred on the site. It is important that there is at least one occurrence of each tree species on the five sites. The software that is used to analyze the two way table is a package called PAST. This stands for Paleontological Statistics. This is a very general package that is useful, in many ways, for ecological and ethnobotanical studies. An advantage of this package is that it is free. It runs on Windows based computers and doesn't require installation. There are three ways to get your data from a two way table into PAST for processing. You can type the data directly into the PAST spreadsheet. That's what we will do here. It is also possible to enter your data into Microsoft Excel and then copy and paste these data into PAST. The third alternative is to type your data into a notepad or other text editor. Each of the values should be separated with a comma. You can open such a text file in PAST. It is time to look at the process of running the PAST software with our data. When you start PAST, the program opens with an empty spreadsheet. This is where we will be entering our data. The first thing to do is to put a check mark into each of the two edit boxes. These are near the top of the window. When these boxes have a check mark, you are able to type into the body and margins of the spreadsheet. The second thing to do is to type the site numbers into the column headers. We are using site numbers from 1 to 5. The third operation is to put a name for each row into the left column. The rows are for the species. We'll use name abbreviations. You can see that we are using a single letter from A to N for each species. Finally, the fourth task is to fill the spreadsheet cells with either a 1 for the presence of a tree species on a site or a 0 which indicates that it is not found on the site. You now have all of your data entered into the spreadsheet. The fifth step is to protect the entries and to allow analysis. We do this by removing the check marks in the two edit boxes near the top of the spreadsheet. The sixth step is to transpose your data. Transposing consists of rotating your data. What were columns are now rows, and the rows become columns. There is a menu item on the edit menu that does the transposing. You can see the result of the transposed data. In general, we went from a spreadsheet that was tall and narrow to one that is wide and short. The purpose of this transposition is that this is the arrangement needed for the analysis. The seventh step is to select all of the data that will be used for the analysis. 
We are going to analyze the entire spreadsheet, so click and drag across the entire spreadsheet. After you have done this, all of the data, except for the upper left corner, will be highlighted. The eighth step begins the analysis. Go to the Multivar menu, and choose Cluster Analysis. The ninth, and final step in running the analysis, is to click on the Jacquard Radio button. This indicates that you are using presence and absence data. You will now see a dendrogram. This dendrogram is what we are going to use, to interpret our results, for it shows the similarities between the sites, based on the distribution of tree species. The interpretation is going to use the dendrogram that was just produced. It also uses the experimental design. Recall that our experimental design was sites, arranged on the mountain transect. The dendrogram, as you see it here, has been rotated, so that it is in a more standard orientation. There are several things to note, regarding the interpretation of dendrograms. The site connections, such as 4 and 5, can rotate. Here, site 4 is placed above site 5. However, the opposite arrangement, with site 5 above site 4, is equivalent. It is the location of the connection, that is most important. The overall pattern, for these data, show two large groups. One group is made up of three sites, while the other group consists of two sites. The two sites that are most similar, are sites 1 and 3. Also, site 2 appears to be similar to this pair of sites, it is often useful to mark the grouping relationships, on the dendrogram. This helps highlight the groups. In our example, sites 4 and 5 make up one group. The other group consists of sites 1, 2 and 3. We can call site 2 a subgroup as it is not quite as similar to sites 1 and 3, as these two sites are to each other. Now that we have identified our groups, we can return to our experimental design, and finish the interpretation. The mountain transect has been colored, to show the general pattern of the tree distributions. The two big groups, were colored differently. The blue area shows the upper elevation group, at sites 4 and 5. The yellow area is the lower elevation group, consisting of sites 1, 2 and 3. The subgroup in the lower elevation, site 2, was made a similar color as the larger group in which it fits. We have now completed the use of the community analysis procedures. We found the pattern in the distribution of the trees on the five transect sites.